everybody loves Knuckles the Echidna, right? <coughs> of course we do. And why shouldn't we? This ass-kicking, always falling for a tricking, but still totally wholesome guardian of Angel Island had probably one of the best character introductions the Sonic series has ever seen. After being misled by Eggman and knocking the super out of Sonic, the rivalry between these two would end up taking the fandom by storm back in the 90s, making its way into every media arm of the franchise and even gave Knuckles' his name enough sway that Sega thought attaching it to the western release of the 32X Chaotix game would help its sales. Even though, um... You know, nobody owned a 32X. You could have plastered the 90s equivalent of Mr. Beast on that shit and it wouldn't have made a blind bit of difference. Not my boy's fault. Anyway, Knuckles rounded out the classic era of Sonic as one of its most popular characters, even replacing the blue guy himself as the favourite among many on the school playground. The future was looking bright for this stoic guardian and when the time rolled around to take the series 3D, you could bet your bottom Bet my bottom. That Knuckles would be front and center for it. Nope. Sonic Adventure 1, 2, and Heroes all seen Knuckles remain an integral part of the cast. He would have the lore around his past expanded on. He'd discover girls. He would make the choice of friends over duty and learn to do what makes him happy. If you had been following his journey from the start, the character of Knuckles the Echidna had a very clear trajectory. The Guardian arc of his character seemed to be coming to a close, but that didn't make him any less important. There was still plenty they could do with him if the will was there. But then, you know, Sonic 06 came along, gave the game's media all the ammunition they needed to dismiss every Sonic game out of hand, and killed even the idea of Sega using the extended cast again in any meaningful way. Unleashed brought in a melee combat gameplay style and didn't include Knuckles. And the so-called meta era, Jesus. The less said about the meta era, the better. A relentless bombardment of cringy humour, mostly at the expense of the extended cast. Every game I'd go in prepared to give the story a chance, and every time, without fail, I'd just come away like... What? After Sonic Forces, it honestly seemed like the series would never recapture what made it special for me in the first place and that its huge selection of once awesome characters, Knuckles being one of the worst affected, would be doomed to stagnate in their flanderization indefinitely. But then, there was this glimmer of hope. I know I've spoken about the Frontiers prologue already, but I honestly can't understate just how much this short did for Knuckles' character. We were told that his rich history actually matters again, that he is a deep and troubled intellectual with some serious internal conflict, that he is a stoic warrior who will fight to protect his home, but that he is also compassionate, taking care of the innocent and those without the means of protecting themselves. This was the knuckles I enjoyed throughout my childhood. This dutiful, caring, tough-as-nails badass. And it was crazy surreal to see this version of him again after over a decade of endless humiliation for him. This prologue made me go into Frontiers with some level of optimism for its story. And if you've watched any of my videos covering the modern depictions of these characters, you know that's quite an achievement in and of itself. Now, we know Knuckles didn't end up being playable in Frontiers, and that did somewhat automatically hamstring what they could do with him in the story, but with a whole island to himself, a brand new writer, and an overall shift in tone for the series as a whole, I was still eager to see what this game had in store for my boy Knooks. Like every friend that Sonic comes across in this game, we first find Knuckles in a dormant state, trapped in cyber prison. And once Sonic releases him, he wastes absolutely no time breaking his balls about this so-called rescue attempt, eloquently pointing out that he's still half ghost. Straight away, we see that the banter between these two is already a million times better than anything we've seen during the meta era. They're bickering a lot more akin to what you see among brothers as opposed to two people who just don't like each other. Evident by the fact that right afterward, Knuckles shows concern for Sonic after seeing him absorb the cyber corruption from his cage. He's a sweet dude, but trusting that Sonic knows his own limits, he quickly moves on. 
displaying his usual to the point and no-nonsense character, he asks Sonic to bring him up to speed. And learning it's another case of grab the emeralds and smash the robot, a bit of grabby smashy, the two doofuses decide now is the best time to settle who can do a better impression of Sora. That is literally the only way this scene makes sense, seriously. Ah, oh, I love these two dorks. It seems Frontiers is eager to reframe Knuckles as a brave and stoic warrior again. As an audience, we've now seen just how successful this guy can be when written properly. Sonic Movie 2, IDW, hell, even his classic and adventure depictions. Knuckles has always been naive and a little goofy, but he was also strong, loyal, and honorable. Traits of his that have been sorely missing in these games for so long. But the genie is well and truly out of the bottle now when it comes to Knuckles' character. And it's no longer realistic for anyone at Sega to pretend that they don't know what we want anymore. Knuckles seems to once again perfectly embody the traits that made up the bulk of his original characterization. Happy to dive in front of Death Beams to save Sonic, and ready to duke it out with Sage, the crazy AI girl who locked him away here, if that's what it takes to save everyone. But after Sonic insists on a more diplomatic approach, Knuckles says he is too trusting. Which, I mean, this is Sonic we're talking about here. Founding member of every enemy is just a potential friend incorporated. But when you actually stop and think about it, this is a very interesting thing for someone like Knuckles to say. A lot of the recent woes in his life were a direct consequence of him being too trusting. Too naive to see when he was being duped by bad people. This is some really great progression for him as a character, further proving that in fact Knuckles isn't dumb at all. Not in the slightest. He's smart, and very capable of learning from his mistakes. He even asks what I thought was a very insightful question when Sonic tells him about the Sky Voice that's helping him. Why can't any of us hear it? Nobody else in the entire game thought to ask this, and I just love that of all people, Knuckles was the one to think about this more critically. From not knowing his left from his right, from being the ass end of every joke, to now being the one who asks the big brain questions. I love it. Sonic's friends all have their own unique take and approach when it comes to dealing with the Coco on their respective islands, and Knuckles' is probably the most wholesome of the lot. He seems to have this strange sense of camaraderie with these warrior spirits. Some primal instinct buried deep within to help them in any way he can. Knuckles is clearly projecting the many conflicting feelings he has about his own ancestors onto the events he sees unfolding here. Even though it seems he doesn't approve of their actions, again in the prologue he ponders whether his role as guardian is a punishment for their bloodshed, but he still lost his whole species to a force they had no hope of defeating. Just like how the ancients these Coco represent seem to have had no hope against their foe. Of course, there is the whole weird irony that it was a mutated member of this race that went on to wipe out the Echidnas. Whether they deserved it or not, I'll leave that up to you, because either way, whether Knuckles put two and two together about the Ancients and Chaos, don't see how he wouldn't, he has eyes, he still can't just sit back and watch them suffer. His strong sense of honor forces him to help. Or, you know, forces him to make Sonic help. Knuckles saluting the Coco as they return to the afterlife, or cyberspace, or whatever this symbol represents, is really wholesome. He clearly felt a connection to these spirits, even if it was only him projecting his sense of loss for his own tribe. He knows some of the runes on this island have connections to his own, and if he can find any answers to better understand his past, and the legacy left for him by his ancestors, he'll do whatever it takes. I know I briefly touched on this before, but I couldn't get enough of the bro chemistry between Sonic and Knuckles in this game. It's just been too long since we've seen it done right. A chemistry that readers of IDW and fans of the movies are probably somewhat used to now, but something people who purely experience this universe through its games just don't get enough of. They have slightly cringy but also awesome banter. They make each other laugh by busting each other's chops. They have some really endearing moments where Sonic does what he used to do best. Inspire his friends. Even though part of him wants to be alone, probably because it's all he ever knew for most of his life, the reminder this place is for Knuckles that he is the last of his kind greatly saddens him. 
But Sonic reminds him that while he may be the last Echidna, he's definitely not alone. He has his friends. Sonic is on fire at points in this game, seriously. I'm not used to not hating post-2008 Sonic. Is this... is this happiness? About Sonic? Knuckles envies the freedom that Sonic has in his life, and is now actually talking about trying it out for himself someday. Which, when you think of classic or adventure era Knuckles, the eras Frontier seems to be drawing on most for him, that's a pretty big step for his character. Seemingly rewriting where he ultimately ended up in Sonic Heroes and taking a second stab at that arc, once again questioning everything about his life. It seems Knuckles is, again, finally figuring out what he wants for himself, and I'm eager to see where this do-over of his takes him this time. When you take into account that Knuckles describes his time in Cyber Prison as a nightmare, a place of terrifying visions where he felt more alone than he ever has before, it really is no wonder that his emotions are somewhat on the raw side in this game. He clearly had to confront the ghosts of his past, and had no choice but to face his feelings about it. Cyberspace apparently pulls from an individual's memories, and between a lifetime of being alone and being shown visions of his ancestors' misdeeds, misdeeds that have left him shouldering a burden we now know he resents, I have no doubts that his time there was particularly hard for him, making the scenes where he talks about wanting something new for himself a lot more understandable. Same goes for his relationship with the Coco. Extinction plays on Knuckles' mind a lot, it's personal for him, and you see this all throughout the game. Naively, he would rather think the Ancients had moved on and settled elsewhere, than admit to himself that they're probably gone, just like his own kind. And I'm still pinching myself that I'm actually seeing anything near this deep in a Sonic game again. No, everything's not perfect. There are definitely some slightly clumsy and clunky lines here and there. Sonic, we're even after this. But even then, I can just gaslight myself with the fact that Knuckles is a big dork. You could totally imagine him saying something like that in Sonic Heroes. And right afterward, he immediately does something selfless, giving up his freedom right after getting it because he trusts Sonic. And after a decade of thinking his day would never come, I'm finally starting to trust the idea that Knuckles might be back. No amount of great writing and on-point characterization will change the fact that Knuckles still isn't playable here, and I do have to acknowledge the storytelling opportunities that are lost as a result. But as far as that all-important characterization goes, I'm quite happy with the way things are looking for my boy. Those of us who grew up during the classic or adventure era are now seeing the Knuckles that we love be revived. Anyone who joined the ride with the Boom or Meta games are seeing that his goofy dorkiness doesn't have to come at the expense of his depth as a character. And people who might be trying out this game after entering the fandom through the movies or comics are blessed with some level of character continuity. With Knuckles, at least. After over a decade of being pushed around, being the comic relief slapstick clown, being just plain dumb, we are finally seeing the course correction many have been hoping for. Sure, it's only baby steps with Sonic Frontiers, this game had a lot to prove across the board. So with all things considered, at least things seem to be on the right track for Knuckles. Re-establishing his past, acknowledging his history and depth, an immensely powerful warrior with insane skills and strength, a generally honourable person who cares about the vulnerable and helping his friends. We even get to see some of his treasure hunting stone nerd side, as he makes a chump out of Sonic with his big brain knowledge of ruins and stone. And he's constantly about to jump into the fray to help before realising he can't. Words can't do justice to just how much I miss this version of Knuckles. After such a long time of expecting so little for him, it's just great to see him redeemed. And you know, he references his super form. As someone who loved Sonic 3 and Knuckles as much as I do, that shit was a home run for me. Well done, Mr. Flynn. Only male hedgehogs can go super my ass. As Knuckles gets back to his island, at least for a while, I can't wait to see where his character goes from here. Every character in this game talks about some form of fresh start, taking time away or trying something new. So am I crazy for hoping that we might actually see spin-offs for some of them? Something to well and truly re-establish them and cash in on their popularity? 
I don't know. Maybe I am crazy. I stuck with this series through 10 years of shitty narratives, so the evidence is fairly damning. But now, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Did you enjoy Knuckles' characterization in Frontiers? What do you think is in store for him going forward? Do you think he will get his own spin-off? And what sort of game would you want that spin-off to be if he did? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you found yourself enjoying the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to hit that bell. If you don't hit that bell, you pretty much aren't subscribed, so make sure to click it to see more from me. You can also join the channel Discord, Ace Colony Arc, not immensely proud of that name at all. You can get more of my up-to-the-minute ramblings on Twitter. And if possible, you can support me on Patreon or with a super thanks right here on YouTube. All of your support is much appreciated and any amount, no matter how much, is a big help for me. It literally helps me keep creating content for you guys. Equipment, editing software subscriptions, electricity. Your support helps me with all of that. Plus, you get to see your name listed at the end of my videos. All of those links are in the description, so be sure to check them out if you can. But for now, a big thank you for watching. And as always, guys, take care.